Hello, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School family and friend. This is Pastor Kendall once again coming to you with a midweek service uh, for our time together. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday, April 1st, and so it's no fooling here. Uh, we're actually going to be doing a service, and we're doing it in the chapel here at St. Paul. I thought it would be fun to have a different kind of background than the backgrounds that we've had in the past, and I love this particular uh, statue that we have in the uh, the chapel helps to remind us of what Jesus had done, especially during this period of Lent, as uh, we are reminded of uh, the sacrifice that Jesus had given for each and every one of us. And, you know, I like the fact that his hands are out. Um, if you look closer, you can see the mark on his hand. But also, I look at that as Jesus reaching out to us. That even in this time of social distancing, where we need to protect ourselves by loving our neighbors, but that Jesus himself did not believe in social distancing, that he will always come to us and be with us, that he is reaching out to us no matter where we are. Whether we are, um, whether we are in worship in the sanctuary or whether we are here in this medium of uh, video. And so it's an opportunity for us to be reminded of that. Just a couple announcements for uh, for you. Uh, once again, I just want to remind you that uh, I'll have um, lunch break with Pastor Kendall this Friday at noon. Uh, so you can just jump on and uh, listen. We'll be going through another psalm that talks about hope. As we look at what the Bible says about hope and kind of look at different aspects of hope that the Bible tells us. Last week, it was that we have hope in God's unfailing love. That was Psalm 33. So we'll move into a new psalm this Friday. Also, just to let you know, as far as Palm Sunday is concerned, uh, we will be doing a radio broadcast. We'll be doing our uh, videos, um, that's a, just as we've been doing over the last few weeks as we uh, remember Palm Sunday. Also, this weekend, I will have an announcement uh, as far as what we'll be doing for Holy Week and uh, what the rest of the month is going to look like. Um, I am in conversation with the elders and also uh, waiting to what, see what the governor says and uh, some other information. So I uh, just want to be sure that I'm able to give you the right information. So this weekend... We'll be able to uh, to talk about that and have an announcement as to what we will be doing during Holy Week. So with that, uh, we continue on as we've been uh, restoring the roar, as we've been walking alongside Amos in the book of Amos. Last week, we were in the first part of Amos chapter 7, and now we move into the middle part of Amos chapter 7, where um, the roar of the lion is being heard and being stated. And um, it's not good news for uh, for the people of Israel. And so uh, we are reminded that um, the roar of the lion roars in our lives, but also it roars in a different way, in a way that can remind us of our sin, but also in a way that reminds us of our forgiveness. I look forward to sharing that message with you. And so we begin together as we are in the midst of our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a call to worship that's based on Hosea chapters 5 and 6. The Lord is like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. He says, I will tear and go away. I will carry off, and no one shall rescue. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, that they would earnestly seek me. After two days, the Lord will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Come. Let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us, that he has struck us down, that he would bind us up. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, 
that he may heal us. He has struck us down that he may bind us up. At this time, as we come together in this medium, we come together also as an opportunity for us to confess our sin, for us to come before our God and to say, God, you know what? I am sinful. I have done the thing that you don't want me to do and the thing that I'm that uh, that I should be doing that I just don't do. And so we have that opportunity to come before our God, even in this medium, to not only confess our sin, but also to receive his forgiveness. And so I'm going to pray, and I would invite you to pray along with me. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, our rebellion and disobedience causes the land to tremble, and we who dwell in it mourn. Oh God, it is like the mourning of an only son, and it ends in a bitter day. Father, we have tried to hide our sin from you and each other. That we have refused to bear each other's burdens and turned away from those in need. That we have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the homeless, and the oppressed. We are sick of it, and we are sick from it. Hear us as we take a time to confess to you and to meditate on your word. My friends, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I, a called and ordained servant of Christ, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading for today comes to us from Amos chapter 7, and specifically verses 10 through 17, if you'd like to follow along. Again, Amos chapter 7, verses 10 through 17. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall be a prostitute in the city and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword and your land shall be divided up with a measuring line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus, our Lenten King. As I was growing up in St. Louis, one of my favorite places to go was the St. Louis Zoo. And when my wife and I were there for seminary and uh, we had our kids, it was something that we would do all the time, it's take the kids to the zoo. And one of my favorite places at the zoo is the big cat country. And there, there was this biggest lion that I've ever seen. His name was Oba. Yeah, it's O-B-A, Oba. And if there was ever to be a fight, 
I would publicly make the announcement right now at clear as possible that I am on Oba's side. You see, Oba weighed almost 500 pounds, and he boasted a huge mane around his neck, and he had enormous paws. And while my kids enjoyed at the zoo, like the penguin puffin coast, they, they enjoyed going to see the monkey, they enjoyed the giant turtles, and, and my wife just loved to be able to see the gentle giant giraffes. I liked standing in front of the king of the jungle, as long as he was in his cage, that's for sure. Panthera Leo, for Latin lovers, the king of the beast, for nature lovers, behind bars, for lovers of life. Oh, I know, Oba should be free, should be roaming around Forest Park, where the St. Louis Zoo is found in St. Louis, feasting upon its squirrels and rabbits, but who wants to wake up to a lion alert? Who wants an up, close, and personal visitation from this sort of beast? Not me. As far as I'm concerned, the lion must remain in his cage. And you know what? I'm not the only one that feels that way. In fact, Amaziah, the priest at Bethel that we heard about in our reading just a few moments ago, is building a career around keeping the lion in his cage. Only this lion goes by the name of Yahweh. Amos chapter 2 verse 2 says this, Yahweh roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. You see, the last thing that Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, wants to see is a lion alert. And so whatever the cost, whatever the compromise, this lion must never, ever rumble in Israel's jungle. Amaziah's ecclesiastical policy means that anyone who rattles or shakes and open cages, well, they've got to get out of Dodge immediately. But in our reading for today enters Amos. Amos, who is a Judean cattleman, he comes from the south, and he's a fig picker from Tekoa. And we hear, lion alert, lion alert, call 911. Amazon must begin immediately Operation Safe Church Policy, because it is through Amos that this lion is saying to Israel, for three sins of Israel and for four, I will not turn back my wrath. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your sins. Woe to you who long for the day of Yahweh. It will be a day of darkness and not light. I hate and I despise your religious feast. I cannot stand your assemblies. Woe to you who are at ease in Zion, who do not grieve over Joseph's ruin. You see, this is not a still, small voice. This is not gentle Jesus, meek and mild. And this is no tame, purring little kitty cat. No, Amos chapter 3, verse 8 says this, The lion has roared. Who will not fear? Lord Yahweh has spoken. Who can but prophesy? So Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and do your prophesying there. In fact, when interpreted, Amaziah is saying, Amos, this temple isn't big enough for the two of us. So get out of my face, you fig-picking, low-wadded, shepherd boy, prophet wannabe. 
My motto is tolerate. Let sleeping dogs lie. I long to cooperate. To all radicals, I say bye. You see, this priest, Amaziah, he's an expert in image building. He's an expert in marketing technique. He's an expert in public relations and salesmanship. In fact, in Amos chapter 7, verse 11, in our reading for today, when he reports to his boss that the prophet is preaching, he conveniently avoids certain sticky issues. Issues like bring multiple aspects of different religion and try to bring that into the religion of worshiping Yahweh. Certain sticky issues like poverty and oppression and social injustice. His king, Jeroboam ben Joash, will no doubt recommend a raise for Amaziah because at Bethel, this priest is running such a small and smooth religious operation. My friends, do not be deceived. You see, there are powerful forces in our lives. Powerful forces in our church. And in our world that we find that are shouting to us to be an Amaziah clone. To be content with religious cliches and jargon instead of blazing, burning truth. To sit satisfied in church with the model, the, with the motto, come wheel, come woe, my status is quo. You see, we live in a culture that systematically domesticates, it systematically defang, defangs and declaws the roaring lion. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul states these words. He says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will have the form of godliness, but deny its power. But living in the power, Amos says these words. He says, I am neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet. When interpreted, Amos is saying these words. He's saying, I am not a religious professional. I'm not paid to just make pious proclamations on public platform. I will not be bought or compromised or deterred or deluded or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice. I won't negotiate at the table of the enemy or ponder the pool of popularity or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up. I won't back up. I won't let up until I preached up, I prayed up, and I've stayed up. So why would that shock us? Why would it shock us to see Amos acting in this way. After all, if you look at the Old Testament, we see many times where the prophets of the Lord were acting in the same way. In fact, Moses confronting Pharaoh with Yahweh's thunderous statement, let my people go. Or Nathan, who courageously put his ecclesiastical career on the line when he summoned David with the word, you are the man. As he talked to him about his adultery with Bathsheba. Elijah takes the heat from Ahab who calls him the troubler in Israel. And Jeremiah. Well, he daringly rewrites Yahweh's words. After King Jehoiakim had sliced it and diced it and burned it. And joining this goodly fellowship of the politically incorrect is Israel's greatest radical. Why he once had the courage to make a whip and then use it to cleanse his father's house. Another time he looked at the religious leaders of his day straight in the eye and he said, Woe to you, teacher's law, 
of the pro and the Pharisee, you hypocrites, you are like whitewashed tombs that look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead man bones. Climatically, he would stand before his high priest and confess, in the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. But this lion, this lion is also the Lamb. And his mighty power is made perfect in weakness. You see, Jesus allowed the soldiers to march him along the Via Della Rosa, where he would shoulder his crossbar with blood that had been big butchered from his back. Blood coming from his butchered back. That Jesus would allow his executioner to strip naked and shove him to the ground and pin him to wood with their tool of torture. And Jesus would absorb the, the spit and the insult without asking his father to dispense 12 legions of angels. You see, societies don't execute Cap and Can Captain Kangaroos and Mr. Rogers or SpongeBob. But they do destroy people who shake their religious establishment to the very core. There they said on a Friday afternoon that there's no need to call 911. There, there's no need for a lion alert. He's crucified, dead, and buried. But coming forth from the tomb, the lion rumbles in his jungle. From Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah he has triumphed. There is nothing dead about our Jesus. He is no syrupy, sentimental love. But his fierce love for you and for me is driven by nails. It's marked with scars and it's crowned with thorns. And what do you suppose Amaziah will say to Amos? that the prophet himself would finally give up, that he would give in, and that he would go along, that he would just be the good old boy. What would the prophet say, prophet say if Amos becomes a yes man to Jeroboam ben Joash? Amaziah and all who are like him would say, welcome to our religious club where our motto is, come weal and woe, the status must forever remain quo. But what do you think Amos will say if Amaziah confesses? Enough is enough. I will no longer sell my soul on the altar called compromise. It's time to let the lion loose. Well, Amos, he would raise his hand. He'd make the sign of the cross. And he'd announce what you hear in the absolution of your sins. I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And those words wouldn't be just for Amaziah. Those words would be for you too. By Jesus' hands that are reaching out, reaching out, showing what he had done for your forgiveness and giving that forgiveness to you. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all of our understanding keep our hearts and our minds in the one true faith until life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we would normally do the offering within our worship service, and I just want to remind you 
uh, that it's always helpful for us to take a moment to give thanks to God for all that he has given us, all the things that we have, uh, the opportunity for us to have our health, uh, to have uh, uh, health officials and uh, those that are uh, keeping in mind and monitoring the uh, pandemic, um, the opportunity for us to have at our disposal um, food and clothing, all the things that God provides from us. And that's why I, again, like that particular uh, statue, is because as his hands are coming out, we are reminded that all the blessings that we receive come from God's hands. And uh, so we're thankful for that. And uh, just a reminder that uh, you can either uh, drop off your offering here at the church. Uh, you can come in the front door. There is a table with a wooden box. You can just drop it off there and then head on uh, out. Uh, if you would like to do that, please be sure to call um, in advance to make sure that there is someone here in the office to let you in since the doors are uh, locked. Also, uh, you can mail in your offering too uh, if you would like to do that. And um, another option is for you to go online. You can go to uh, St. Paul FD for Fort Dodge. So St. Paul FD.org. And there you will see um, a button at the top on the right hand side. It says tithe. Uh, you can just hit that. It'll drop, uh, a drop down menu will come down and uh, you can proceed uh, from there. There's also a button there that says contribution that you can also uh, go from there on that front page. So just wanted to kind of give you uh, some options for you uh, as we continue to give thanks to God for all that he has given us and uh, for all that, that we um, are thankful for in the forgiveness of sins, in uh, the eternal life and salvation, but also the worldly, the material, material goods that we have to help sustain our bodies and to sustain our life. So we are thankful for that. We're also thankful that even in this medium, we have the opportunity for us to come before our God in prayer. And so we do that now. Lord of the church, we ask that you would inspire your people with a great love for worship. We thank you for the opportunity for us to use technology and uh, and through that technology to know that we can worship you, that we can still be part of the body of Christ. Give us a, a fervent zeal in your service and exuberant joy in the advancement of your kingdom. This we ask because you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power. Therefore, we will not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord that you are a God of power and might, and you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic, and teach us to be patient and faithful citizens of this land, using ourselves and our resources wisely for the good of all, as we seek to love our neighbors. A merciful Lord, your son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion and patience and endurance to all who suffer illness, who are troubled in mind or whose times on earth is short. Spare us from death now, but give us courage and comfort far stronger by your power over death. Eternal God, you carry the grief of those who mourn and remember all who die in Christ. Give comfort to the grieving and the peace to the dying and give that same comfort and peace to us who live in the shadow and fear of death, that we would neither live nor grieve as people without hope, but trust in you at every hour. We ask that you would hear all our prayers, especially for those that we have on our hearts and our minds. But we especially lift up to you, Richard Merrill. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to make your presence known to Richard in this time. We ask that, uh, that you would continue to be with Maureen as she is giving care and, uh, 
and in the best way that she can comfort to Richard, that we know that you are there with him, that in the midst of this accident that uh, we ask that you uh, would make your presence known and that your will would be done, whatever that will is. And that through all of this, we know that you are here with us. It's the same for those that we have on our hearts and our minds. We ask that they too would know of the promise of your presence. For you are faithful and you keep your promises. We thank you, Father, for all the baptized who have departed this life. Confessing Jesus as their Savior. Give us your Holy Spirit to follow their example. And bring us with them to those joys unspeakable in the new heavens and the new earth. This we ask because you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We see the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give each and every one of you is peace. Amen. And blessings to you during the rest of this week. We will be having a hymn as uh, we have been doing over the last few weeks. Uh, we'll be having a hymn that um, is one of my favorite Lenten hymns. Here's an opportunity for us to sing it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that sought my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first i yeah.